In this video we're going to talk about MoDOT super elevation uh, settings and explain what is super elevation, how to use the MoDOT standard plans to calculate super elevation. Also we'll be showing you the AASHTO green book uh, to show you where the numbers uh, come from and where you know the values in the tables and, and it kind of explain super elevation in a general way. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is super elevation? Well, super elevation is basically just the tilting of the roadway to help offset the the forces, the centripetal forces that develop as the vehicle goes around a curve. Now, along with uh, the centripetal forces, the friction, those two are the two things that keep the vehicle from going sliding off the road. For that tilting of the roadway that must be done gradually over a distance without a noticeable reduction in speed or safety. Here's a simple uh, kind of a representation of what happens to a car when it goes through a curve uh, on a road with super elevation. First the car is starting on the tangent section of the road before it hits, hits the curve and at that location uh, it's on a normal crown, uh, what is considered normal crown, where it's a 2% slope and a 2% slope down. And again, that's typical on tangent sections. But when it comes to a curve, you're going to start seeing that the as soon as the curve gets to the AA section, that's the last uh, section where it's on a normal crown. Once it gets past the AA section, you'll notice that the roadway starts to super elevate up to a 0% uh, percent slope, which is the BB section and then something called a reverse crown at the CC section and then it tilts the roadway even further all the way up to full super and holds that full super uh, until it reaches the other DD section on the other side of the curve. And then once it gets past the DD section you'll notice that it starts to go back down uh, all the way to the AA section which will be at normal crown again. So here we're at the reverse crown which is 2% all the way across the road here we're at something called a zero crown where there's a zero slope on one side of the crown. And then we're back at uh, the AA section which brings us back to the normal crown where you have a 2% slope on either side of the uh, crown in the middle of the roadway. Now this super elevation happens on every curve that you experience on the road. Now it varies from degree, some curves are super elevated more some curves are super elevated less. So let's talk about what are the design parameters for super elevation. There's things for divided and undivided highways. Super elevation is applied differently based on the, what type of highway it is. There's urban and rural. Typically with urban there's more stop and start traffic so the super elevation max will be less than for rural highways. There's design speed, the radius of the curve, spiraled versus non-spiraled curves and we'll talk about when you apply a spiral to a curve and how to apply the super elevation to spiraled curves and non-spiraled curves. Then there's something called location of axis of rotation and that will deal mainly with the number of lanes rotated, which is our next bullet. So let's first talk about the highway types. The first one we're going to talk about is the undivided highway. Typically with the undivided highway, the horizontal alignment is applied at the center line of the roadway, which is typically the crown uh, or pivot point. And the proposed profile is also applied at that location. So here's a basic uh, sections of a undivided crowned roadway at the center. Uh, you can see that the pivot point is at the baseline and that's where the profile is being applied. And so at the very first section at the bottom there we have our normal crown section where it's normally 2% slope going up to the crown on either side and that's considered our AA section. Then we have a, something called a level crown where it's 0% slope on one side of the pivot point and that's considered our BB section. At our CC section it's considered something called reverse crown where it's a constant slope, 2% slope across the entire roadway. And then we get to our full super and that full super again 
can be uh, that value for the super elevation rate does vary based on the radius of curve that you have. And again, this is the typically on an undivided roadway how super elevation is applied, but there are cases that are not typical. For example, on a floodplain, what's typically going to happen with a floodplain is it's going to rotate about the the uh, inside edge here on the right side and so this point here will be the lowest point always through uh, the super elevation and then on this side uh, typically uh, used for like overhead restrictions they don't want the the roadway to get any higher than say uh, this point right here and so what they do is they rotate down about the inside point the next slide will show us a divided highway situation. With a divided highway situation, typically the median uh, the, or the horizontal alignment is applied at the center line of the median. The profile is also a, assigned to that horizontal alignment, but it's applied at the inside edge of the divided highway. And what they call that distance to move the profile from the center line over to the edge is a, uh, considered like a, a tie distance. So here's a typical uh, example of a divided highway situation. This, this situation has a median, and so you can see that we're rotating about the inside edge on both sides. This is, again, where the profile is applied at. The baseline's in the, in the center of the median. And uh, down there, you can see our, our sections. We do have the same sections as we do as an undivided highway. We have the AA section, which is normal crown the BB section which is level crown, the reverse crown is the CC section and then full super. A non-typical application is where uh, the baseline is at the center line of the, of the median and the profile is applied at the center line of the lane and so you can see that uh, it's rotating about that center line on all sections A, A, B, B, C, C, and D, D. All of MoDOT's super elevation standards come from the AASHTO Green Book. It looks something like this here. And we also um, utilize standard plans that are, are basically um, the information comes from the Green Book and is applied in those standard plans and those standard plans you can get those from project wise in, in the following location. If you open up that link uh, to the standard plans you'll see that there's uh, nine pages of super elevation standard plans and with those plans what they look like is uh, something similar here. The first four sheets in the standard plans deal with undivided highways and on this first sheet you'll, you'll get a diagram of a super elevation runoff transition. This one down on the bottom deals with no spirals and this one deals with spirals. The way you apply the super elevation to those two different alignments, one with spirals, one without, is slightly different and so you would utilize the information on the sheet uh, to lay out that super elevation. Uh, now other things that are in these standard plans are location of axis of rotation, super elevation runoff, and widening and spirals. So here's the second page and the second page deals with case number one on how you rotate the super elevation. Since this is an undivided highway, case number one is rotating about the center line of the roadway. Then the next sheet deals with case number two. This time it's uh, rotating about the inside edge. And then case number three is rotating about the outside edge. The next three sheets deal with divided highways. Uh, the first sheet deals with uh, a curve having a spiral curve. The next one deals without having spirals. And then this third sheet shows you the typical case how super elevation is rotated about a divided highway. Then we have two more sheets, 4% table and an 8% table. Typically the 4% is for urban, 8% is for rule. And what you'll do with this is you look at your design speed, you look down at what radius you have, and then you look over to see what super elevation uh, you'll have for your curve. 
The next sheet is for widening. If, you, if your curve is so uh, small, uh, in some cases you might need to add some curve widening for large trucks to get through your curve. So spiraled versus uh, non-spiraled curves. How do you determine whether you need a spiral or, uh, or not? Well, if you look at this sheet, there's some verbiage over on the right side that says spiral curves are used on all roadways that have a design traffic greater than 400 vehicles per day and have a radius less than the values listed on the maximum radius for use of a spiral curve transition table. So if we bring up that table a little bit bigger, so for your design speed, if you have a radius less than what's listed there, you would need a spiral, along with the design traffic being greater than 400 vehicles per day. So let's look at uh, the standard plan 20320, and we're going to uh, specifically look at this location here, because this location will basically tell you how to calculate where to apply uh, your super elevation. Okay, so we're going to bring that, open that up, and this is a non-spiraled curve. And the critical point on this diagram, when you look at it, is this point right here. It's the PC point. From that location, if you know what your uh, your runoff is, and you can get that from the tables, or you can calculate it uh, if you want. But if you know your runoff, which is L, if you if you take that L divided by three. From the PC point, you can calculate what your DD uh, station is going to be. And if you know where your DD station is going to be, you can again take that runoff length and minus it, and you'll get your BB section station value. And then from your BB section, if you calculate something called X, and that value, that equation for X is right there, which is just the runoff length times the normal crown divided by the super elevation rate for your curve you can calculate your CC section and then if you minus X from the BB uh, station value you can get your AA section. So let's look at a uh, some basic uh, super elevation design information. We're going to take a look at the values and we're going to show you how to input it into the Open Roads Designer uh, dialog and then we're going to look at some uh, some of the standard plans and see if we can calculate uh, the super elevation based on those basic super elevation design uh, information. So the first thing if you're you're using the Open Roads Designers you want to set it to the MoDOT XML. The MoDOT XML has been set up uh, so that it utilizes just the 4% max super elevation and the 8% max super elevation tables and it will calculate um, the runoff based on those two tables. So first thing we're going to have is rule design. Again, rule design will let you use super elevation up to an 8% uh, max uh, super elevation. We're going to use undivided. So when you put this into the dialog down below, you just pick it right from the pick list. Then we have a design speed of 60, which will be in the pick list down below as well. And then a radius of 300 feet. And what the tool will do is it'll use utilize the ASHTO 2011 equation 2-23 in table 316 to calculate the runoff length. And once it does that, you'll get a runoff length for 133 feet. And to show you that, so here's the 8% table. Again, we've got our design information at the top there. We're going to uh, which is the 8% table there. We're going to look at our 60 miles per hour design speed. We're going to look at that radius. And because the radius falls between uh, the two values, what you do is you take the more conservative value, which is the lower one. And then from there, you can see that we get 133 feet uh, from the L1, which is the one lane rotated uh, column. And we'll talk more about number of lanes rotated here in a second. So again, looking at this super elevation uh, file, this MoDOT XML file, it's, it's called a MoDOT super elevation rules file. And if we take a deeper look at that rules file, you'll see that there are two main things that get calculated from that rules file. One is the maximum slope for each curve in your alignment. 
and the runoff distance for each curve. So here's a portion of the uh, the rules file, that XML file, and at the very uh, tip top you can see that they've got uh, something called a maximum E-rate calculation. This is this is where in the file it tries to calculate your maximum super elevation rate for the for uh, the curve in your alignment. We have a four percent table here and then an eight percent table further down. But in each one of those uh, four percent and eight percent tables, they have different design speeds. And we got the thirty and the thirty-five showing up right there. And in there, in each one of those, they have radius values. And based on those radius values, say we have a radius, either one of those two radiuses or somewhere in between, what you'll do is if it's in between, you'll go take the more conservative value, which is the lower one, and you'll pick that E rate, or maximum super, super elevation. And the reason the lower one is more conservative is because it gives you a higher super elevation rate, in this case, 2.6%. Again, here is the uh, rate table at 4%, and then here is the 8% table, or a portion of the tables at 8%, and you're, you're kind of wondering, well, where are all these numbers coming from? Well, again, our super elevation is based off the Ashto Green Book, and the radius values are extracted from the Ashto Green Book on tables 3-8 and 3-10B, minimum radius for design super elevation rates. In there, Ashto states the following. Where snow and ice are factors, test and experience shows that super elevation rate of 8% is the logical maximum, which we have here in Missouri. We do have snow and ice, and so that's why we limit our curve, radi a curve super elevation to 8%. Where traffic congestion acts to restrict top speeds, it's common practice to utilize a lower maximum. And so what MoDOT has decided a while back is that with the MoDOT standard plans, we're going to supply a Emax of 4% for urban and an 8% for rural designs. Now, that Emax comes from a whole bunch of uh, equations in uh, the Ashto Green Book. And what the Ashto uh, tries to do is it tries to take those values, and you could try to figure those out, but they're very convoluted and very confusing. And what they try to do is they, they will put it towards a, a chart. And so uh, on the next page, you can see that we have a chart based on the design speed. And if you look at the radius of curve, you can then kind of uh, figure out what super elevation rate uh, you have on your job. They also, and again, that's probably not the best way to use it. Uh, what they do is they have a chart just like we do in our in our standard plans and we basically have mimicked this chart that they have here and put it into our standard plans which is this right here so where we get our numbers is basically straight from the Ashto Green Book and we're just kinda mimicking what they have and in, into a more simple format we have the four percent at the top and the eight percent at the bottom here So let's go back to that MoDOT XML rules file. We talked about the E-rate selection in the tables at the top of the file, but they also in there uh, calculate the runoff length. And the way they do that, they call it a transition length. They use an equation, um, and the equation is listed right there. And um, all that stuff is just, again, directly right out of the Ashto Green Book. This is the equation that's in the Ashto Green Book. And uh, while a lot of those number or values you may not know, we're going to talk about all those and how to calculate that transition length. Now, in that equation, you'll notice that there's a delta at the very bottom. Uh, uh, this L over R equals such and such over delta. That delta is something called a maximum relative gradient. And that maximum relative gradient is basically uh, a chart uh, that you can use in the Ashto and again, based on a design speed, you have a maximum relative gradient. So to figure out, well, what is what is a maximum relative gradient? We're going to talk about that over the next few slides to try to explain what a, a gradient value is. 
The relative gradient uh, is the slope of the edge of pavement relative to the axis of rotation. Again, if we go back to that diagram in the standard plans, we have a diagram that kind of basically lists all the edges of pavement in an undivided uh, highway. Uh, the first edge of pavement is this one here. This is the slope of the edge of pavement on the outside. Here's the axis of rotation at the center line. And the difference between those two is called the relative gradient. Another way to look at it is this the diagram where we have the AA section, BB, CC, and DD. And you can see that uh, the outside slope of the edge of pavement is represented by the red dots here and the axis of rotation is represented by the green dots at the center line. You can see at the AA section that we're at a 2% slope. BB section we're bringing that up to a 0%. CC we're bringing that up to a positive 2% and at the DD you're at full super which in this case is a 3% slope. So you can kind of just see that visually that that dot is moving up as it goes through the curve. Again, one more uh, explanation of relative gradient in a kind of a picture format. Here down here we have a negative 2% slope and a 0% slope. And at, when you have that situation, you're at something called a level crown or a BB section. And then at the other end, we're at the full super section, which is the DD section. And the difference between the DD and the BB section is something called a runoff length. And that's typically the length that you're trying to transition your super elevation from that full super back to a level crown situation. So if we would take that slope on, on this edge of pavement over here that mimics the center line, so this is a zero slope all the way down to the full super section. And then we take a look at that edge of pavement which is going from 0% slope up to full super. The difference between those two slopes is the relative gradient. And those relative gradients are in this little chart here that we utilize in our rules file. Again, it's based on design speed. And for uh, that particular design speed, that is the relative gradient that you use. So where do the relative gradient numbers in the table come from? Well, Ashto states that a maximum relative gradient is varied with the design speed to provide a longer runoff lengths at higher speeds and shorter lengths at lower speeds. For appearance and comfort, experience indicates that a relative gradient of 0.78 and 0.35% provide acceptable runoff lengths for design speeds of 15 and 80 miles per hour respectively. Interpolation between these two values provide a maximum relative gradient shown in Ashto table 315. And you'll notice that those values match the values in the other chart at the top of the slide. So what does the maximum relative gradient numbers mean? So let's use a, an example here. We, if we have a design speed of 30 miles per hour, we get a relative gradient of 0.66. Now, again, relative gradient is just basically a rise over run situation. And so if we start plugging in the numbers, our 0.66% uh, slope equals our rise over run, which equals the following. And if I rearrange the equation, I can calculate what my run's going to be. In this case, my run's going to be 151 feet. So my relative gradient for every one foot rise, I've got to run 152 feet in order to transition the super elevation out. If we look at the table ASHTO 315, you can see that 152 value there that's calculated. So what does L-min mean? L-min is the minimum length of runoff. For example, if we have a design speed of 60, our L-min is 53 and our relative gradient is 0.45. So if we look at the equation in Ashto 323, L min equals that equation right here. The variables for the equation are LR, which is minimum length of super elevation runoff, which we're trying to calculate. W is the width of one traffic lane, and typically in Ashto uses 12 foot for that. The number of lanes rotated, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. 
Uh, ED is the design super elevation rate in percent. B is the adjustment factor for the lanes rotated. And uh, delta is the maximum relative gradient in percent. So let's put that in equation form. And let's put in the values. And you can see the lane width is 12. Number of lanes rotated is one lane rotated. Super elevation rate is 2%. The lane adjustment, if it was greater than one lane rotated, uh, we would put in a lane adjustment. And the maximum relative gradient is, is 0.45. If we uh, run the numbers, that minimum length of runoff is 53 feet, which matches uh, the chart up there. So let's look at the MoDOT standard plans. And again, when you're talking about minimum runoff, what you're looking at is a, the situation where you have the smallest super elevation rate you can possibly have on a curve, which is the reverse crown situation. And if we use our design speed of 60, like in the example, you'll see that we get that 53 feet value for a one lane rotated. Now say you wanted to not calculate for the minimum super elevation, you want to calculate for 5% slope. What you would do is just basically slide down and look at the 5% slope and then you should get a uh, one lane rotated of 133 feet for 60 miles per hour. So to check that out we're going to go back to the equation and what we're going to do is we're going to switch from minimum length of runoff and we're going to put in a 5% slope and as soon as we do that it changed to length of runoff because it's not minimum anymore we're using a 5% slope and that calculates out to be 133 feet if you run the numbers. So again uh, that equation will work for any percent slope that you have uh, to calculate uh, your length of runoff. So if we look back at the uh, standard plans again, we're looking at the design speed of 60, we're looking at the 5% maximum, and again you get the 133 feet uh, for the length of runoff for a one lane rotated. Let's look at ASH show information on lane adjustment factors. A strict application of the maximum relative gradient criterion provides runoff lengths for four lane undivided roadways that are double those for two lane, and for six lane would be triple. While these lengths of this order may be considered desirable, it's not often practical to provide such lengths in design. So on a purely empirical basis, it's recommended that the minimum super elevation runoff lengths be adjusted downward to avoid excessive lengths for multi-lane uh, roadways. The recommended adjustment factors are presented in AASHTO Table 316. Here is the lane adjustment factors in the AASHTO Table 316. Uh, in the bottom they have diagrams of uh, three different scenarios. Uh, on the left is one lane rotated, in the center is two lane rotated, and then on the right is three lane rotated. But the chart above has the rotated uh, number of lanes anywhere from one to three and a half. Uh, you can have a half lane rotated. The way we have the ORD super elevation configured is if you have a 12 foot lane and then any length beyond the 12 foot lane, if it's between zero and six feet wide, that would be considered a half a lane. And then anything greater than six feet would be considered another full lane. So for example, if you have an 18 foot wide uh, lane uh, that would be considered uh, a lane and a half rotated about the inside edge. Lane adjustment factors. Let's explain that a little bit more. Say we have a divided highway situation here and our axis of rotation and profile are applied at the inside edge. This would be considered a two lane rotated because you're ro rotating two lanes on the one side of the of the rotation point. Now if we change this up and we put our axis of rotation at the center line of each individual lane or roadbed, in this situation we have a one lane rotated because we're rotating just one lane on either side of the rotation point which is this point right here. Okay. So let's look at the standard plans Again, MoDOT has one lane rotated and two lane rotated in the standard plans, but they're 
can be other values that uh, you could calculate for rotated lanes for a specifically a half lane. But in this situation, we're just looking at the two lane rotated. And how this works is you look at the, at the chart. For two lanes, the adjustment factor, again, uh, they're, instead of just doing a, a value of two, they're, they're, uh, that length would be too long. So they're bringing that down just slightly by applying that factor. So it's basically two times 0.75, and your your rate of increase will be 1.5. And so you take basically L2 equals L1 times 1.5 for two lane rotated. And so if you take 53 times 1.5, you get 80 feet. So that's how the lane adjustment works. You figure out how many lanes are being rotated. You look at the chart to figure out the value that you need to apply and you do that apply it to the one lane rotated. The multi-lane factors are in the standard plans and you can see how for the number of lanes rotated and the value that you need to multiply by on the right there. And that's a just a brief explanation of the MoDOT settings how to calculate the values for the super elevation. Uh, you don't, you don't want to just take uh, the output from the program itself. You want to be able to verify uh, the numbers uh, either by looking at the MoDOT charts or manually calculating it yourself.